papers that uh, Stanley said I discovered in his trunk after my parents' house fire. There was over 300 letters written in a five-year time period. Those are incorporated in the book Searching for Stanley, and so Stanley tells his story first person. Uh, Stanley never fulfilled his goal of becoming a radio broadcaster, but with his letters in the book, his voice is heard, and he, so to me, his his uh, his voice and his life is perpetuated. First person through his letters. I didn't know anything about Stanley growing up. My dad never talked about him, and my grandparents never talked about him. I think they must have been hopeful that someday he might show up. And so one coincidence led to another, to another, to another, and we ended up with. Uh, knowing, knowing Stanley, understanding his fate, uh, many connections with people in Austria, Stanley's crewmen, a JPAC team, and I really felt the responsibility to tell the story, to leave his legacy. It is the story of Stanley's life and the story of a lot of soldiers that are missing and what happens to families when there is someone missing in action. Uh, many, many years ago, there was a congressman that lost a brother or somebody in the Vietnam War or something like that. So he thought that maybe the government should try to find some of the people who were MIA, missing in action. So he proceeded to get a bill through the Congress to create a group within the military forces to uh, go and locate uh, people that are missing in action from uh, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, the Cold War. Uh, there's about 78,000 missing from World War II. And they think that about 50-60% oh, of them are recoverable if, if they can find them. And with today's technology, they can identify just about everything if they get uh, some remains. So anyhow, that's how we kind of got into the program. Uh, uh, I saw an article in the Los Angeles Times one time, years and years ago, that, where they were excavating for a pilot that had gone down somewhere. And I sent the article to my daughter Kay, and she called the writer of that article in Los Angeles and and got the address of the MIA command in Hawaii and contacted them and and through a process of three or four years uh, we got a crew to go to the Cray site which was in Austria to uh, sift through all the debris of the Cray site and see if they could find the uh, remains of my brother. And so from that point on, Kay spent thousands of hours on a computer and so forth to uh, bring the story together. And uh, the book, Searching for Stanley, was, was a result of that. Uh, Stanley was the airplane commander and pilot of a B-17 out of the 15th Air Force, uh, I was a, had the same position as a, as a B-17 pilot out of the 8th Air Force, so it kind of dovetailed in with what we were doing and uh, we could add quite a lot of perspective to the, the crew that were over trying to find remains had never had uh, a relation on the, on the job site before and, and uh, especially one that had been doing the same thing as uh, the fellow that they were working looking for. So we spent two different time in two, two different summers in Austria uh, trying to find the remains of my brother and also the uh, flight engineer who is still missing too. Uh, five, of the, five of the ten man crew survived and after we got going into this thing, well, we, we got to meet them and interview them and 
get part of the story uh, from there.